In today's adventure, we walk into Mexico. It's time to go into Mexico. Have mechanic issues. I'm so sorry. I was quite ripped off. And rethink my whole life. Kind of a weird week. Hello, my name is Victoria Rose. Welcome to my channel and welcome to Bisbee, Arizona. So there's a whole street of like basically you're going back into the past into like the 50s style if you don't know which you guys probably do but if you're new here i live in my 1998 jeep cherokee and my name is victoria that's who i am so welcome and welcome back <laughs> this bee began as a prospector's camp in 1877 and was established in 1880. in its heyday bisbee was the largest city between houston and los angeles the mining camp was one of the richest mineral sites in the world in my last video, we went to Tombstone. Bisbee is just outside of Tombstone, like 20 minute drive. And um, it's also used to be a mining town. Now here you can see a huge like canyon that they actually cut out, a man-made canyon from all the mining that they did. This whole thing right here is man-made mining. Now this is technically Lowell but it's like right beside Bisbee. None of these stores are actually working stores. There is a breakfast club I might stop into to get some coffee. Now, I've traveled pretty far south, so far south, that I'm nearly in Mexico. I wanna just go to Mexico. <laughs> Walk into Mexico. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. There is a place where I can go where the wall's only halfway up, where I can technically get in, but that's um, what we're gonna do after this. I just stopped in here and got a cup of coffee. So last in the Up in the mountains, which was freezing, it got below 30. It was very cold. I did not sleep well at all. Where I was staying, just someone was murdered there. I just, I couldn't go the full path, so it was not a good night's sleep. So hopefully tonight I'll get some sleep. Still really want to do this hike, and I'm hoping that the day warms up a little bit because it has been cold and rainy. And breakfast place gave me a free coffee. That was so kind. I had to make a garage appointment for tomorrow because as I'm going downhill, my brakes are starting to grind. And it's very alarming. Brakes are not something I want to mess around with. So tomorrow, to go to the mechanic again, as is my life. This has been a lovely little town to visit, but I must move on to Mexico now. All right, I'm in the National Forest that is basically right on the um, USA-Mexican border. And there is one trail where you can see the border monument. And like I said, the, the wall is halfway built there. And on that note, we begin. It didn't take so much longer than I thought it was going to. I have plenty of water, at least. Let's get to Mexico. I can't really see, but I got a notification on my phone that says, welcome to Mexico. <laughs> This is gorgeous. It's such a pretty hike. You can literally see the border right there. That's the border. This is all an uphill climb. This is like climbing up the mountain. This is a long. I didn't anticipate it to be this long. You just hear how peaceful it is. There's, I've not seen another person so quiet. I have to do what I said I was going to do, which is get to Mexico, even if I want to stop early. I'm never going to be an avid hiker. It's just not, it's never been me. One more mile. Also, update, these boots have been great. Where did this road come from? I could have just driven here. <laughs> That's my mindset. I don't, I'm just not a walker. I was not born with walking jeans. That's a tall wall. There's Mexico. <laughs> There's just a little section of a wall. But let me give you perspective of how tall the wall is. This is the marker. I'm going to go into Mexico now. I'm in Mexico. 
Mexico. Wow, it's so different over here. <laughs> okay, back in the United States of America. Random section of the wall, it just ends up there. That was a very hard hike because most of it was uphill. So oh, it's exhausting, you know, hopping from one country to the other in, in one day. <laughs> That's anticlimactic or not, but I thought that was pretty cool. Now I have to like all the way back. My nap's so bad. I'm so tired. This is not the right hike to do whenever you haven't slept the whole night. I could literally fall asleep right here. A lot of hiking left to do it. I'm so tired. I'll see you when I'm done with this. I did it. Okay. Did it make me a better person? No. Do I like hiking? No, I hate hiking. Will I do it again? Probably once I forget how much I hated it. Was that the never ending trail that never ended? Yes. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm reading this book, it's called Dopamine Nation and it's a great book. And sometimes it's about embracing the pain rather than like always seeking pleasure because we have a balance inside of us of pain and pleasure. Most people choose to seek the pleasure first, but if you seek pain, you can get the pleasure. And then, you know, you're balanced and you're in a healthier state. I wanted to die. I'm gonna eat some boiled eggs, cottage cheese, prunes. What else do I have? My tamarind bites. I need to recover. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we take Yuki into the garage and see if there's lots of things wrong with her. So the update is that I was very frustrated today. And usually I always lie to when I'm frustrated because like I said, I like to vent. I was very frustrated because Oh. The diagnosis was that the rotors pretty much destroyed the brake pads, so the brake pads would have been fine, but the rotors were messed up or whatever. So I ended up, they charged me, they quoted me $900 for replacing the rotors and brake pads just for the front. And I feel like I was quite ripped off. Um, I think that's the higher end of what it should have been. And they were fast with it, but I just, that's a lot of money. It ended up being a little bit cheaper. He said he quoted me a little bit wrong, but it wasn't that much cheaper. So I just did, I, I did not expect to pay that much money. I didn't even think that, that there's anything wrong with the brakes until they made that groaning so sound once. It was just a shock to me, but I'm like, I can't just risk my brakes and I'm already here at a mechanic shop. It's going to happen again or be the same thing in a different mechanic shop. So I just, I just said, okay, go ahead. I don't really have a choice. So that really set me back today and it really made me upset, you know? It kind of crushed the dream of kind of staying somewhere for a couple weeks, possibly, you know, just to recharge and regroup. I just live streamed and I talked about it too much already. So that's the update on this old Jeep that is giving me a, a, a heartache. Hmm. The show goes on. It is windy, windy, windy right now. But I wanted to show you the skirt that I got at Tombstone. So I'm out here in the plains. How long can I survive in the brutal Arizonian desert of the USA? Yuki's brakes don't squeak anymore, that's nice. I know I got totally ripped off. I didn't have time to find another mechanic, make an appointment, get it in, diagnose it again, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna pay like, what, $200 for a pair of rotors? But like, even if you upcharge, uh, that's my complaint, but we move on, we learn. It is so beautiful out here. After all the cold and stuff, it's so nice to just be back out in the sun. I'm happy to say that next week, this temperatures are gonna be perfect in Sedona. So I'm gonna head back up and then finally get back into Utah. Rethinking my life or just rethinking everything and what I'm supposed to do next. And I've been going through this process for the last week or so, or a couple weeks. I'm on a nice hike out here. Um, I haven't filmed for the last couple of days, just, uh, just trying to figure some things out. And um, it's just been a kind of a weird week um, with everything. So I'm just very introspective. What an absolutely lovely little hike. It's gorgeous. And the vibes of like all the people on the hiking trails just it felt good vibes. I I've realized that I need to change my perspective about humans to a better one. 
and to appreciate them more and I kind of just want more people in my life and I'm you know that's a hard thing for me because I am a loner type of person to say and a scary thought but I think it's obviously something I should be working towards I just don't know how yet I'm so sad that was all my honey I hardly even got to eat any of it it fell out so this video has been all over the place quite directionless but that is my life I spontaneously booked something today I probably shouldn't have after <laughs> all the money I've been spending but it's something I want I've been wanting to do since I've been out here so I'm just gonna do it we'll do it in the next video though I want to end this video with just you know encouraging you guys to remember what's important in life and um, don't let your frustrations and your stresses and your anxieties become so big and real that they consume you. And I have to remind myself of this every single day. I actually just started a book that's really good and I recommend it already because it's something that I truly believe. It's called The Expectation Effect. And it's basically whatever you expect in life is basically how you see life. Adjust your expectations accordingly. It, it's very psychological life. Not everything has to be so grim. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> And I do think the most important things in life are your community and your purpose. And I'm still searching for that. Right now I'm having a period of aloneness, but I don't anticipate that to last forever. I hope it doesn't, because I, I do think life is more fulfilling with other people in it. And for now, you guys are that. So I really appreciate you. Stay tuned for the next adventure and stay extraterrestrial, which just means just be yourself.